Hey guys, Lorky FPV here. I want to do a quick video on the Betaflight gyro and D-term filtering removal. So the first step of that is soft mounting and then you do configurations in Betaflight. I have watched so many videos online about this and every one of them is like an hour long. So I'm going to try to make this super simple and quick. So the very first thing you need to do is eliminate as much mechanical noise and electrical noise from your setup as possible to allow you to prog uh, progress through all of the steps to eliminate all the filters. Now that's probably possible on some, not possible on others. Uh, the amount that you can get through those filters is going to depend on your setup, but every step you take is a step in the right direction. And if you can remove all of them it really does make a big difference. I've, I've done it on this quad that I just built. Uh, one of my others, my Furby Futon, I was not able to get all the way through. I wasn't able to do the last step, but it still was a market improvement. And the, the big thing is your prop wash. It really, really cuts it down uh, a lot. So. So if you have a setup already, you can get these little silicon O-rings and they just go right on top and then your board goes on top of that and then your nut goes on top of that and some people even put another one of these I mean the more the merrier so also new flight controllers like I just got this DYS F4 comes with these which you see how it's notched here that's actually where the board lines so that you got a little bit above and below and then it just kinda squishes and I mean this is really squishy. I think this probably does the best job. Um, so it, I think you can buy these separately. Race Flight sells these for their boards. Uh, they have a really sensitive gyro. And the main purpose here is to clean it, your, keep the mechanical noise vibrations from your gyro. That's the flight controller soft mounting portion. And the motor soft mounting is to also, so it doesn't travel through the frame, to it. So both, you got two ends here you need to cover. On your motors, there's lots of options. I don't know which one's best. Uh, so the first thing to come out was a lot of TPU. Uh, in varying thicknesses, this one's actually pretty thin. I've seen one, two, three millimeters. This is probably one. Uh, this is a Ninja Flex. I, this is what I'm using on this. It's a little thicker. Ninja Flex is supposed to be a little bit softer than TPU. And some people are also starting to put out silicon, which I think is probably going to be the best and the most durable. I think this will compress over time and you'll need to replace it. Uh, that's what I found with my TPU ones anyway. I haven't had these Ninja Flex on long enough to find out. There's lots of options. People are using electrical tape, like doing, you know, a couple, like two or three layers of electrical tape, or the, there's this rubber uh, insulation stuff you can get or foam or you know anything I don't know what's best honestly I think anything will work um, maybe someone will do some tests uh, I, I, I haven't done any testing so point is I mean I have this the Ninja Flex I have the DYS ones here I have another setup with these um, and then also electrical noise capacitors and please do a better job than I did at mounting this I need to mount that somehow. Um, so I have a 1000 microfarad 35 volt Panasonic low ESR capacitor. Um, you can buy these dirt cheap, just buy a whole bunch of them. Um, at a minimum, you'd probably want to put at least a 470. I went with the 1000 on my main leads. Joshua Bardwell just did some testing and on some of his setups, it had a lot of noise. He found this. Uh, wasn't quite adequate and he ended up putting some 330 on the each ESC so uh, it's going to depend on your your setup I, I have no problem with just putting one 1000 on there so the next step is to do all of the beta flight stuff all right guys so here is the beta flight portion so after you soft mount everything the there's four steps okay so you actually want to start in the CLI the very first one here is in the CLI the rest are under the pits filter tab 
So you want to do a get low pass and you get your your dump out there of all your low pass settings in the configuration so I've already changed it uh, the specific one you want to look for here is the D low pass type equal PT1 uh, it's going to be by quad by default so according to Boris um, they have all these filtering on to be on the safe side because they don't want to hurt anyone's hardware all right, they don't want to burn up people's motors, so no matter how noisy your setup is, it's safe to fly. But it's not, it's going to have a latency to it. The more filtering you have, the more latency you have in your system. So by removing these filters, you're gaining, um, well, lessening your latency. So the first thing you can do is change from bi quad to PT1. So if you were to do that, you would just do a set. D low pass type equal PT1 and then you would type save. All right, I've already done it so I'm not going to redo it. But uh, the danger to doing any of this and the reason they play it on the safe side is because these filters can cause your or by not having filters because of all the gyro noise uh, can cause your motors to heat up. So worst case scenario is your motors burst into flames okay I, it's probably not gonna happen but the point is you want to do this step by step and test and make sure your motors aren't getting too hot so I would recommend going out go for a flight land feel your motors maybe get an infrared thermometer you know uh, just check them see kinda get a baseline of how hot they are and then do each of these steps go out at least do a 30 second hover uh, I, I was kind of hovering and just doing little punches up and down, you know, giving it a little bit of extra throttle and then landing and making sure they weren't hot. And mine were barely even warm. So some people were suggesting to go for a flight after that, you know, do two steps to change a filter, do a 30 second flight or hover, then go fly. And I just did the 30 second hover and if it was barely even warm I, I figured there was really no point in doing a flight so do the first one the PT one I just suggested go fly do your hover whichever uh, and feel your motors if they're still uh, not too hot then you can move on to the next step you want to go to PID tuning filter settings uh, I've removed them but it would be I think it's 400 200 so these are the stock settings so the first one you would want to do is this one change that to a zero save go fly make sure it's not too hot change this one go fly make sure it's not too hot um, I have had no problem doing these on all of my quads the the first one you get the most bang for your buck starting at the beginning so you get the biggest difference at with that PT1 and then you, you get diminishing returns as you go along so even doing just the PT1 should make a fairly decent difference and then if you can do this one you know you're gonna notice a difference and if you can get all the way through uh, you're going to be extremely happy like it, it seriously cuts down prop wash a lot and it just feels a lot more locked in so the last one you need to do here is the D-term notch zero now you want to be cautious about this one if you are on any beta flight version older than 3.1.7 there's a safety mechanism built into the new one where when I, I one of these values or some value if it's above this can cause a runaway uh, basically your quad flies away so I've seen some videos where people aren't on the newest they do this and as soon as you arm your quad takes off alright so when you get to this step I would recommend arming and just you know line of sight arm it make sure it's not gonna fly away um, that, that's pretty much it. Once you get through those, uh, you've disabled at least the, the ones that Boris has specifically recommended. 
then you can also even start moving these up. Uh, moving these up is actually less filtering. Uh, and also, this is only for if you're running a 8 kilohertz or less gyro. Uh, you do not want to be doing this if you're above 8. So if you're running 32, do not do this. Uh, there's additional filtering built in that is not configurable for the 8K, I, I believe is what Boris has said. So once you go to 32, there's a lot less. And by removing these filters, you can, the results, the noise would be amplified significantly on 32 kilohertz, and it could be unflyable. So this is mainly for 8 kilohertz and below. That's pretty much it. Um, yeah, I, I've done it on two of my quads. I need to do it on my third, but uh, I mean, I hardly fly the thing anyway. It's just my backup quad. But I noticed a big difference. It feels a lot more locked in. Um, the prop wash is significantly less with the same exact PIDs, like the all the PIDs. I didn't change anything, and it's it's like I just cranked them up. And my batter or my uh, motors are barely even warm on my newest quad that everything is very well soft mounted. And my other one that's not quite as uh, good, I was able to go all the way through except for step four here. So I did the first three and it feels a lot better as well. And my motors are kind of warm, not not hot I think I don't know exactly what the temperature is but if it's hurts you to touch it that's bad um, if it's reasonably hot when you touch it you know you should probably back it off a little bit so I'm gonna start trying to do some of these other you know raising these up as well to filter even less since my temperatures are so low on this and then mess with my tune but that's it guys, uh, hopefully this helps, later.